Deion Sanders has put the world on notice with his exceptional turnaround as head coach at the University of Colorado. With his upset of TCU last week and his sound defeat against Nebraska Cornhuskers, Deion Sanders is the truth. For those people who doubted him, he is proving the naysayers wrong. And it's the first time that we've seen a Hall of Fame NFL football player, most notably, arguably, the greatest NFL player of all time, coaching in a white-dominated head coaching field in the NCAA Division I. But he has a lot of haters, some of them black people like Jason Whitlock. Look at me. What about me would make you think that I care about your opinion of me? Your opinion of me is not the opinion that I have of myself. You ain't make me, so you can't break me. You didn't build me, so you can't kill me. I, I, you know what? God, God established me, so you ain't nothing you can do to me. Dion is expressing a feminine, morally bankrupt worldview. And he's passing it off as confidence and a false bravado. He, he either is so devoid of self-reflection and understanding of the bigger picture, he doesn't know what he's doing, or he knows exactly what he's doing. He's dressing up a harmful worldview, a feminine worldview, a demonic worldview. He's dressing it up and calling it Christianity, and it bothers me. He also has white haters too. So much so that Brother Tariq Nasheed had to drop some knowledge on this case. I hope everybody um, is having a good weekend so far. Shout out to our brother Deion Sanders doing his thing out there in Colorado. Deion is shining, and I knew our brother would, would be on top of his game and bring the school on top of their game. Um, months ago when people were trying to doubt our brother and they were criticizing him for leaving the HBCU, I said, no, no, let our brother cook. He, he's going to do what he's supposed to do. He did what he's supposed to do with the HBCU, and he's about to take the game to another level. So Dion is single-handedly, you know, making college football shit. He's making that hotter, as hot as the damn NFL at this point. He's making the shit hot. You know, the, he got the whole country excited about what's going on out there in Colorado. Colorado is now the epicenter you know, that's ground zero for college football now. And let me tell you something. These white commentators, boy, they low-key, they can't stand Dion. You know this? Low-key, they're salty as hell. Do y'all know just low-key how much they wanted Dion to fail? They wanted Dion to fail. You, you dig? These people are very passive-aggressive when it comes to Dion. They know he makes the game hot. He shines, and you know. To, let me. It was one um, commentator. Uh, he was up there with Stephen A. Smith. He was talking about, well, yeah, I'm gonna root for Nebraska, yeah, because I'm Dion out. Yeah, they they can't even hide their contempt. <clears throat> they can't hide their contempt. But that's to be expected. I mean, when you're doing it your way and you're being successful. Somebody's going to always be mad. And if Dion was a white coach, people wouldn't have a problem with it. But let's ruin you! Just a few months ago, when Dion Sanders took this job, leaving Jackson State, a lot of people were upset. Many people in the black community. And even people like Dr. Claude Anderson, who made a sound case for Dion leaving Jackson State, had this to say. I was kind of mixed too. On one hand, there was a lot of money there for this job. But on the other hand, I saw him really building a very powerful legacy that was going to be to the economic benefit of not just him, but also to the university, to the city of Jackson, uh, and to HBCUs as a whole. Uh, did you have any thoughts on that? Well, in the context and under the context of powernomics, what, uh, what one should ask oneself is, how did Black folk benefit from that? How did they benefit from, from leaving a, a, a black school, going to a white school, or, or getting more money, or getting more visibility? What did that, at the bottom line, if I were to pour everything through a net and dry it out, what do you get, what's, what's left over? What have black folk got to show for that whole charade 
of going going from being on a black team to switching to a white teams. So when you graduate, you can get more money and you can get a little more visibility. I don't understand because I can't see integration is a dis is a de degraded situation for black folk. Why would you get your 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 jollies or your kicks off of being off a white school besides just money? See, if you're fighting for your lives, if you if you knew your race right now, which they should know, your race has holds a world's record. W O R L D B world record for the longest enslaved people on earth. Why would you get your, why would you get your kicks off of going with a white school just to get more money? Now let's fast forward, Dima. Let's fast forward to yesterday's victory. And here we have a lot of people that have a lot to say about Dion recruiting his friends to come to Boulder, Colorado to check out the Colorado Buffaloes. This person here, JBZ, says this so they can pull up to Colorado but can't pull up to the HBCUs. And this is referring to Wu Tang pulled up to watch Colorado versus Nebraska coach prime effect now people are upset about this and you even have people in the comments that are mad so you have this person saying who the hell cares about wu-tang being sidelined at hbcu game them kids don't even know who they are leave the entitlement out of this and i went to an hbcu the brother jb just stop it they know who they are and then a the person goes nah just the raccoons we all know what that means and so here's the issue you have black people who are upset that he left Jackson State and then you had a whole group of people that were praying for his downfall I'm not even dealing with the whites because of course we knew that that would happen but what I'm dealing with is you had a lot of blacks who were disgruntled that Dion left Jackson State and they wanted him to fail at the University of Colorado and still they they still have that in their minds but see here's something that we don't want to talk about at Jackson State and that is this problem here Hey guys, good evening. Uh, yeah, Thomas Hudson will step down at the end of the month. Now this comes as he's been on paid administrative leave for the past two weeks. Uh, the IHL commissioner announced that Hudson would be leaving the university in a Tuesday night news release. IHL officials are still not answering questions about why Thomas is leaving. Dr. Elaine Hayes Anthony will continue to be the temporary acting president of Jackson State. The campus tonight is a ghost town as students are on spring break, but we were able to catch up with some for their reaction. Excuse me if I'm wrong, but I think he only been for a couple semesters. All right, so uh, yeah, that's that's not a long time, you know. I believe if you're a president, you may have long-term career goals, maybe a couple years here at the school. But. There's nothing I can really explain. It's just crazy. Yeah, I can't really think about it. It's just. It's too hard to think about, really. I don't think he want to, like, the white person guy and stuff like that. So I don't think everybody think they like him or not like him. You know, people different in life. Now, that is Jackson State President Thomas Hudson resigning after Deion Sanders had warned people that he was having a lot of issues with the administration. But see, I found this article called theclarionledger.com on this website and it talks about the seven presidents jackson state has had since 2010. let's look at them there was first dr ronald mason jr he basically retired in 2010 or he left in 2010. then we had an interim leslie burl mclemore after that we had carolyn w myers who reigned from 2011 unto 2016. then there was Dr. Rod Page, interim in 2016 to 2017. Then there was Dr. Willie B. Bynum, who was a controversial choice for the next Jackson State presidency. Then, of course, we had Thomas Hudson, who was an alumnus of Jackson State, and he received his Juris Doctorate from the University of Mississippi School of Law. Now we're on the administration of Dr. Elaine Hayes Anthony, who was the current president of Jackson State. Now that is seven presidents in the last 12 years or 13 years, give or take. Now, let me ask you a question. Assuming you lived in a country, what would you believe if that country had seven presidents in the last 13 years? What about any company that has seven presidents in the last 13 years? How would you expect that company to perform? 
Let's look at a local black church. How would you expect a church to function that has seven pastors in the last 13 years? You would expect it to perform terrible. And what is my position? Although I'm glad what Deion Sanders did at Jackson State, and it was remarkable, Jackson State had a multitude of problems before he ascended to the head coaching position. And even after leaving, they're still having those same issues that he clearly addressed. The problem is with black America is we expect one group of people to always suffer through bad administrations while other people are benefiting. That's right. The people who are benefiting at the top, whoever they may be, want those other folks to suffer. And when the University of Colorado came looking for Deion Sanders, what they wanted to offer was consistency, something that Jackson State wasn't willing to do. Maybe he wouldn't have left for the money if it wasn't for Jackson State who had problems, clear issues in their administration. But the administration just couldn't get it together. They still can't get it together. And now, as we clearly see, it's not his fault. Now, I'm not trying to say that it wouldn't be great if he would have stayed and worked it out, but obviously we can see that the university is problematic. And what he's doing at the University of Colorado makes a lot more sense. And he was doing that at Jackson State with all of these issues. Imagine if Jackson State would have had it together, like even some of the other HBCUs who are doing better than them, he probably would have stayed there. And so the people who are hating on him from the black community, I just don't get it because you're not ever questioning the fact that, hey, this school has seven presidents in the last 13 years. And that is a problem even for the student body. Even the student body realized that, you know what, something here is going very wrong. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Drunk. I appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out.